seared beef and chorizo tacos campechanos with crunchy chicharrón. Hi everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. The next page in our taco manual takes us to, well, let's say a two-parter on bistec. Now, you might not know what beef steak is, but it's thin sliced beef, easily available in any Mexican grocery store. You can find something similar in the American grocery stores that it will be called sandwich steaks, thin sliced beef that's about an eighth of an inch thick. Now, in Mexico, you would find this being served in the places that do tacos al carbón, the grilled meat tacos but it's really a specialty of those that do tacos a la plancha, the ones that are cooked on big, hot griddles. So let's dive first into the meat itself. So I've gotten these packages at Mexican grocery stores here in Chicago, and it's very interesting that they're coming from two different cuts. My favorite is the one that's called Diez Millo, which means chuck eye. It's like a thin cut chuck eye steak. It's got the best flavor, but a whole lot of the beef stick will be cut from the sirloin. So you'll sometimes see it packaged. If your Mexican market does things in English and Spanish, it will say it comes from the, the sirloin. Um, but I like the marbling and the extra flavor you get from the chuck eye steak cut into these very thin, thin slices might remind you of some stuff that you see in your Asian markets as well. Okay, so this first one that we're going to be tackling, it's called a taco campechano. Now, campechano is a word that usually means two or more proteins that are mixed together. And this one is going to be bistec with chorizo. And then I'm going to crumble a little chicharron on top because, yeah, why not? And some of the places that I love in Mexico City do that, so I'm sharing that with you. And we're going to add a little bit of onion and some potato to this one, making it a little bit more hash-like and really to my taste. So the first thing that we have to do, I have this diez millo or chuck eye steak, and you can see it's that one eighth of an inch thick um, slice. And I'm going to put salt on it, season it nicely with salt. Um, this is not a pre-salted one. It's not like the cecinas that look like this, but are salted and cured some, okay? And now I'm going to put into the skillet um, enough fat. You, I'm using fresh rendered pork lard here, but you can use oil if that is to your taste. And I want a nice even coat, a little more than just a very thin layer. And now it's time to put the beef in the pan. The pan was hot before I put the fat in there. And so, it got melted and, and really, really, let's get move that over there like that and ready for the beef almost instantaneously. It'll take us about a minute or a minute, I'll say about a minute and a half to get a nice sear on one side. Then I'm gonna flip it over and get that brown on the other side. Brown is essential here for developing flavor for these tacos campechanos. Okay, let's flip this over and see I've got some really nice browning on that. So this piece should be ready as well. Yeah, that looks really good. And in Mexico, oftentimes the plunges, the griddles are really big and they have really hot spots in them. And so all of the meat will go down to get seared really beautifully. And then they'll move everything over onto a less hot spot for all of the final cooking to do. If you get a chance, go to this one called Taqueria chupacabras. Some of you will know what chupacabras means. Um, and they make big piles of this kind of hash-like filling. They say it has 127 spices in it. I'm going to challenge you to even think up what 127 spices might be. After this is done, 
you take it out. I'm going to leave it over here so that I can chop it up and lay in the last piece of the beef here um, to sear in the same fashion. Okay, that's now flat and in the pan. Okay. Anyway, they make really good tacos campechanos at Chupacabras. Okay, now I'm going to start to chop this up here. Um, and I'm going to do it by cutting crosswise. And then once I get about quarter inch pieces, um, these are always done very chopped. You'll notice a lot of the taqueros in Mexico will use big, that looks pretty good. That's what we're looking for there. We we'll use big, um, big cleavers and they'll go at the meat and um, chop it up really fast. Okay, this is nicely seared. While the pan is still hot here, now if there wasn't enough fat in here, this rendered quite a bit, um, I would put a little bit more fat in here, either that lard or the oil. And now I'm putting in chorizo sausage. I need to kind of break it up so it starts rendering, but we're gonna cook it with some onion, which I'm going to chop now. So I'm gonna cut this up like this. And then I'm going to scoop this onion into the pan with the cooking chorizo. And then start stirring this all together, coating the onion with the rendered fat here. And we'll cook this until the chorizo starts to brown and the onions are softening. Okay, I've cut up the last piece of our bistec. And we've got the chorizo and the onions just about done, grating two sort of medium sized four ounce gold potatoes. You could use any kind of boiling potato for this, like the red skinned ones and that sort of thing. But you want about eight ounces for this recipe here. And there we have it. And we are going to put all of this back into the pan now with the chorizo and onions. That chorizo is browned a little bit. So we're, there we go. Just mix that in really good before you add in the cooked and chopped to be thick. This is smelling really good right now. And I, I, a lot of people don't put the potato in there. So if you're averse to the potatoes, don't put them in there. I just happen to like it a lot. And now I'm gonna put all of the chopped and cooked beef stick in here. And we're gonna let this cook until it all sort of comes together in a hash-like um, consistency. Potatoes won't take very long to cook because they're grated. Wow, that smells really good. Now we're just missing one thing here which is our spices. So I'm gonna grind those in a little mortar here. Um, I'm putting in some cumin seeds and black pepper. This is a little, it's not a molcajete. It is actually made from marble. I bought it in a market in the far-flung Philippines. And it's just the perfect size for me to keep on my countertop and fresh grind spices with. Okay, and sprinkle those 
spices over the top. I've got the Mexican oregano. Bought at the Mexican market, it's always going to be in the whole leaf form. So rub it between your palms to crush those leaves. It's always going to have the best flavor because the leaves crushed just before using gives you or releases the, the oils, which gives you the best flavor there. Ah, this is looking just so good. Okay, this is going to take a couple more minutes um, before everything is cooked through and nicely browned. So I'll meet you back here then. Okay, here's your optional ingredient. It's that crunchy chicharron. If you're going to the Mexican market to buy the bistec, then pick up some chicharron. Well, if you like the crunch. I like the crunch and sort of saltiness of it. Uh, you can crumble it by hand or you can do what I'm doing and sort of chop it. We'll give you that sort of crumbled, that crumbled consistency. So now it's time to make these tacos. I'm going to take the, the skillet and move it over here. And actually like to serve this in the skillet because it keeps this warm but you obviously need to have a large skillet to be able to do this really well i'm going to taste it and make sure that it's seasoned properly it might need just a little bit of, of salt no it actually doesn't chorizo is seasoned i seasoned the the meat that went in there it's nicely browned now. I'll take a couple of tortillas, warm tortillas here, and lay those onto the plate like that. And then I'm going to put just a little of this mixture. Oh, wow, does that smell good. This is for meat lovers, I can tell you that. I'll put that on there. And then this is, to me, the salsa to go with it. We have an, it in another video, but this is the raw tomatillo avocado salsa. Creamy, rich, spicy, tangy, all of the things that you need to go along with this taco here. And now this little lanyap, as they say down in, the, in Louisiana. The little crunchies over the top of all of that. And it's calling to me. I just have to say to you all, buen provecho and dive right in. <laughs>